Welcome back to the channel today. Thank you for joining me again, all you enthusiasts and knife makers and craftsmen out there. Today we're going to talk about heat treating. Stainless steel knives, high grade stainless steel knives like Dama Steel, CPM 154, RWL 34, and 154 CM. I'm going to show you my recipe, break it down to the simplest way possible to heat the, treat this stuff thoroughly and effectively for a good, hard use, long working knife. Let's get into it. Phase one, you're going to need a kiln, a heat treating kiln. Something high grade, even heat, Paragon, those are my two favorite brands. There's others out there. I use a Gen Ken, Gen Ken pottery kiln for a few years, um, which I still have, and I use it for like tempering and high, high carbons and stuff. But this is the e even heat LB18. It's got the long, uh, long barrel thing, whatever. I've shown it in some other videos. You can heat treat up to 18 inches of knife all the way to the back. So. Something with good thermal control that will get up to at least 1950 degrees. That's what we're shooting for today. Part two, the second thing you're going to need is a quenching setup. So for the high grade stainless steels like CPM 154 and Dama Steel, the best thing that works, aluminum plates. They are actually air quench steels or air hardening steels technically, but the aluminum plates up to about three quarters to one inch actually draw the heat out a lot quicker, give you a much more uniform and clean um, hardening at from temperature and they actually help keep it straight a little bit so I've bit rigged mine up here with a little bit of clamp like a wood clamp on the desk I just screwed to it I've got two plates in here I've got two different sizes of plates because you want to make sure you have full coverage for your knife as you go in it's as simple as drop it in and clamp it down that's what you do until it cools off um, I usually go all the way to room temperature with these bad boys before I pull them out of the clamps and remove the foil quench it clamp it let it cool down to room temperature it usually takes about a minute or two and you really really want it to draw that heat out in less than a minute um, and then pull it out of the foil or leave it in really doesn't matter clamp it together with some c-clamps and throw it in the freezer overnight another critical aspect of this you got to have foil heat treat foil this is rated up to about 22 to 2300 degrees I believe it's a 20 thousandths thick stainless steel heat treating foil. You can find it in multiple places, knife supply places, knife supply online stores, um, MSC Direct, uh, similar tools, tool and tooling supply places like that will have this kind of stuff around. I've got a big roll of it. I've actually got a couple more knives that I have to um, get into the tin while we're, um, while we're ramping up the kiln. So let's go ahead and ramp up the kiln. We're going 1950 degrees for I set my kiln for 30 minutes, but realistically in the thinner section, you usually only need at temperature about 10 to 15 minutes um, on a thinly ground blade at temperature. Now my kiln, every kiln's a little bit different. My kiln is actually set at 1930. Um, I found 1930 in this kiln specifically to give me similar results to what I would get at 1950 in some of the other kilns I have. So this one kind of thermal control to the kiln maybe runs a little bit different or a little hot. Um, it's kind of hard to say, but I found the best results out of my kiln and my quench technique and my tempering technique, 1930 degrees at 30 minutes I set it and I usually pull them at 15. I don't know who needs to hear this, but it's definitely somebody out there. 1950 degrees is generally considered very freaking hot. So you need to take some precautions when working with this stuff, pulling something out of a kiln at those temperatures. Eyeglasses, good idea. Some kind of heat gloves, hot gloves, that kind of thing, like this, something along those lines, also a good idea. Your skin cannot take 1950 degrees. It will melt like hot butter and singe and burn and smell like bacon, and like a really bad bacon, not a good bacon, but like people bacon, it's horrible. If you've ever smelled it, it sucks really bad. Another thing you might need, this right here easy fire spray put a router spray can thing or a fire extinguisher similar something along those lines so to recap 1950 degrees 1930 an hour case is very freaking hot take precautions also important something to grab it with you, this doesn't work right here like i said remember the people bacon i talked about that's like people bacon and ribs right there clamps all right, so let's talk a little bit of theory while I'm waiting on this to heat up. Um, there's a theory out there, and I have practiced or, play, or played with this a lot, 
about pre-soaking. Pre-soaking your stainless. I mean, you put them in at about 1450 degrees, um, let them stabilize at that temperature, kind of bringing them up a little bit, so, and then ramp them up to um, your 1930 degrees. We're going to use 1930 for this for this exercise because um, that's what I always heat treat at at this kiln. So the problem with that is stabilizing them at this temperature, you let a lot of the heat out of the kiln, so you actually draw it down a lot faster, um, and it, it, like it draws off your heat. And it doesn't ramp that fast from this temperature to the 1950 degrees, or 1930, takes longer to, to ramp up to than from zero to this temperature. And that's true in most kilns. It actually takes longer to get from that 1450 to the 1950 range than it does from zero to 1450. I don't know why, it's just the nature of the kilns I've, I've used. Um, it may not be the truth with all kilns, so that's just that's just my experience. So what I've gotten into a practice of doing is at about 16 to 1700 degrees is I will actually take my blades and put them in there at that range so they have a little rant warm up time. It's like warming up the oven before you stick the turkey in there. All right, that was a bad analogy. But giving them time to come up to temperature um, and not be such, under such thermal shock as going straight into 1950. I don't actually know if that will affect them in a negative way. If somebody out there is a metallurgist that um, can bring some clarity to that point. As a knife maker, I've never seen anything in the practice of just straight into the kiln at 1930, which is what I do a lot of the time, um, that affects them in a negative way. I'm getting similar, or the same, I'm always getting the same results actually, with uh, so far as hardness after my temper, um, grain refinement and structure, and sharpness and durability. So I don't know that there's any negative effect other than maybe thermal stress that could induce a crack. Possibly. We are about 1600 degrees. Oh, and make sure you have your work holding situation inside the kiln. You know, your little racks put in place before you ramp the thing up. So you don't have to try to dig them out of the back from the last time when you forgot to move them. Like an idiot. This one's an actual order of Huckleberry and Dama Steel. So we're going to get that bad boy in there. Furthest from the door. Onesies. Dama Steel Skeen Dew. Whoa. Twosies. And a good old fashioned CPM 154 Skeen Dew. Three. Oh crap. Oh well, I knocked something over, but it's good. See, we dropped almost 200 degrees doing that. I mean, not really, but you do lose a lot of heat out of the front of the kiln when you when you pull that stunt. So make sure it gets up to a good 1600 degrees. That's what I normally do. Just that's me on my kiln. You're gonna have to play around with your formulas, but 1930 on my kiln, 15 to 20 minutes. Um, the the thicker one I left to the far edge because I'm pulling it last because it is the thicker of the three knives so it needs a little more time at temperature so while I'm pulling the other two getting them in the clamps um, that one can still be nice and hot and juicy pull it out last and it'll have enough time at that austenitizing temperature above non-magnetic um, to get into solution and ready to quench quench so this has got about 10 to 15 more minutes before it hits temperature maybe 15 mm. 12, 12 to 15 minutes before it hits temperature on average from this temperature range. It's important not to rush. You don't want to get in a rush. That's when accidents happen. So, I've got the camera backed off a little ways because I need some space here. I have hit my mark for the first two skiing do. I'm going to pull them out and put them right there. Grab the other one. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Grab these bad boys on there and wait on them. Come on. Aha, there we go. You want to get your weight on top of the knives as quickly as possible. The clamping done. Because the longer they sit on one side, the more likely are that they are to warp warp. Because that these these plates will start to draw the heat out real quick. So I actually have two sets I'm doing today. All right, see, loosey goosey. All right, here we go. Ready to grab this next one. The next one is actually got a tapered tang on it. Um, so clamping it sometimes can be interesting because it can give you a warp in the tang if you're not careful. 
um, because you're not getting full contact. These don't bend, so you're not getting full contact front and back with this thing. So you kind of got to kind of work your way around how you clamp it. I tend to clamp it towards the end of the, um, with the, with the back hanging out the end. Let's try it. Let's go. Oh, grab it. Close the gate. Drop it in. Oh, crap. Oh. Ah. Sure everything stays lined up. Yeah, baby. All right. Oh man, those are almost down to down to room temp, so that's good. All right, so with our little mini soak time we did there from 16 to 1700 degrees, putting them in at that range, um, it was maybe 20 minutes until it hit full ramp temperature, 15 to 20 minutes. Um, so by the time they hit the 1930 degrees, they had already been ramping, coming up to temperature for a little while. So I gave them a solid 14 minutes at that temperature. Um, and then I started to pull them. So that pulling process only took me about a minute to a minute and a half between all three knives. So the last knife, the thickest, got to that 15 minute mark. The other two, the thinnest, the thinner of the two, um, the thinner of the three, the two thinners, um, they came out at about 14 minutes. So everything should be in that good good range for having soaked that austenitizing temperature long enough to get good grain structure, to get everything fully in formula for the quench. Um, now they're just cooling down in between the plates and I'm going to let them come all the way down until I stop here in the click clack clicky clank of the um, the, uh, the stuff. What's it called? The foil. The tin foil. When I stop here in the tin foil snapping, that's when I usually open them up, pull the foil off, make sure there's no straightening that needs to be done. Um, straightening is kind of a pain in the neck with stainless because you can either try to do it right now while they're still up at that hot temperature kind of above four or five hundred degrees but you're kind of jimmying around with trying to you know cut the uh, the tin foil off and stuff like that it can get a little complicated so if I do need to do any straightening I'm going to clamp these up for the quint or for the temp I'm gonna clamp these up for the cryo the cryo portion of this they're gonna stay clamped in the aluminum after I pull the foil off and if there is any straightening that needs to be done I'm gonna do it after that while I'm tempering and pull these off these ones it's been, they've been about three minutes in right now so they should be yeah, they're, pretty, they're pretty cooled off so let's clip this You have to remember the cryo treatment that I give them, which is basically, you can use liquid nitrogen and stuff like that. The cryo treat, I just don't, I don't have any in the shop and where I live. It's kind of volatile, so I don't keep it around. So, a simple thing, and it may not even be necessary, is to just clamp them in these aluminum vices overnight in the coldest freezer you have, which we are nice and straight that's awesome now we're going to clamp these down and put them in the freezer and do the same to number two and some aspects of putting these in the freezer and clamps might be a little superfluous um it may not actually you know it doesn't hurt it doesn't hurt to take the extra precaution especially with something like this where the tangs aren't tapered so the they're actually square and flat in here because they have solid tangs um, and you don't need any clamp, you know, there's no variation in thickness from end to end so the clamps can lay flat. Um, this guy, the Huckleberry, is a little bit more cantankerous because you have a gap at the back and a gap at the front because these are flat plates with a non-flat object in the middle of them. So I kind of tend to favor more towards um, keeping the tang clamped tighter then the tip because I always leave a little extra space on the tip and a little extra thickness up front in case I need to grind um, a little slight warp out. Now I didn't get any warps at all in this one so this actually worked out really well but that doesn't mean it won't pick up a warp in the in the um, cryo here so I'd rather it not pick it up in the tank because that's already been thinned out to its lowest point mostly and I don't want to have to try to correct that. The tip is easier to correct, so in the cryo. All right, you'll have to forgive the background noise. Um, 
somebody decided to start the laundry while I was down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up here. There's not a whole lot left to show in the heat treating process. After a 24 hour soak in the freezer, I pull the knives out, pull them out of the, the clamps, um, and then I put them in for a 350 degree, two hour uh, temper. That's my initial temper. And then I'm going to check for straightness. I'm going to check for um, any issues and stuff like that. You know, cracks, warps, all that kind of stuff is going to show up by then. Um, and so going forward from there, I'll be doing two hour tempers at 350 to 375, depending on if I have to straighten. If I have to straighten anything when it comes to CPM 154, RWL 34, Dama Steel, or any similar in that 154 CM category, like the ATS 34 or 154 CM, um, I typically straighten with a vise um, with a pin jig in it so it's two three pins three pins two opposing one and and like this in the vise and that's all you, that's all you do to straighten it um but i will temper it at 375 to 400 then um, for 20 minutes pull it out and then give it a little straighten sometimes it takes a lot of back and forth doing that um, with the the higher grade stainless like the cpm 154 or rwl 34 um, Dama Steel or otherwise, it, it, it can take a little bit of work doing that, but I also rarely ever get warps. So when I put them in the freezer this time, looking at them, none of them look like they warped. So if they don't warp in the quench, then you most likely won't pick up a warp in the cryo, most likely. Um, so we're going to call it pretty good. I'm going to end it here. If you'd like to see the results of the heat treating, it's going to be in my next video, which is part two of my skiing do video. So I just heat treated the blades for that skiing do video. Um, I'm doing multiple. I'm doing a CPM 154 and I'm doing a Dama steel one. So part two of the skiing do video I'm going to be coming out within the next few weeks. And that is where we will see the final result of my heat treating. Um, we're shooting for about a Rockwell hardness of 60 to 61. And that is typically what I get with this heat treating process I've showed you today. So I hope that helped you, uh, some of you out there that are getting into metallurgy, getting into knife making. Um, this is a pretty broad range of steels that you can do in this range, anywhere from the 1925 to 1950 degree soak time um, at temperature 20, 15 to 20 minutes, 10 to 15, 20 minutes. You can do a lot of steels in that range. Um, so it's pretty basic. Let's just, let's just demystify it. It actually doesn't have to be super complicated. This process is a good starting point. I would say test it for yourself. Definitely try it out on some test pieces and steels. Um, every now and then I'll, I'll grab a, 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 get a new batch or whatever of steel and I'll pull the knife blade out, run it through the process and make sure I'm getting the same results. Because typically I like to shoot between 60 to 61 Rockwell for the CPM 154 series of steels. They, that's just a really good broad usable range for both the finish and the overall longevity of the edge um, and ease of sharpening too, toughness and all that stuff overall. 59 also works too if you're doing like kitchen knives. 59 is a good range and you can play with that in your tempering. You can temper down to those those smaller numbers if you want but on average I get max hardness of about 62 at the high end like without tempering that's from 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 the you know from the kiln to the quench after cryo the max, max I've really ever seen is maybe 62 63 hardness and then I draw it back to 60 61 so thank you for joining me again um, like subscribe comment and share if you have any questions about this kind of stuff leave them in the comments and i'll answer the questions the best i can anything i didn't get answered in the video the uh, the video here so thank you for joining me again y'all be good be safe and have fun